today on The List, we have a scary good time at a theme park. Help pets travel safely and... Five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Step out with the latest Caribbean dance. Five, six, seven, eight. Yo, well. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, inconceivable. You keep using the horse. I don't think it means what you think it means. The Princess Bride is 35. Bye bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle! But first, learn the latest trends in real estate. It's your life, it's your list, and it starts right now. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Jimmy Rose at KG. You know, I've been looking for a house and it's been rough. Yes, probably the interest rates are high, lack of starter homes, trouble securing financing. All of the above, plus, you have to figure out what's real and what's not real when it comes to the description realtors use to promote the properties. So charming kitchens and a yard ready for your touches. Not necessarily good news. No, it's not. And there's a trend pushing back against this type of listing language. Brutally honest home descriptions are our featured story at the top of the list. Here's Richard Sato on Texas culture. In Texas, most people have more guns than they do family members. Jenna Cavadas on New Jersey's affordability. We are definitely not the cheapest state to live in. And Jamie Eklund on Greeley, Colorado's aroma. It smells like a farm town. And here's the thing, they're all realtors who want to sell you property in the very places they seem to be trashing. There's a trend out there of mostly younger agents creating videos where they are being brutally honest about houses about neighborhoods, about the way they look, feel, smell. I met Trevor Halpern of Halpern Residential to find out what's behind the brutally honest real estate trend. For starters, it's a strong social media play. You know, any publicity is good publicity is what they say. And so even if you're being brutally honest and you're ripping a neighborhood to shreds, but it goes viral and you get tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of views, you have just made a name for yourself. And created a revenue stream too. I know plenty of agents who then turn around the money that they receive from the platform and they put it into their marketing. Next, what sounds like brutal honesty can really build trust with a buyer. Our clients may come out of a house and be like, I love it. And you may say, take a smell. <laughs> do you smell that? That's the cattle yard right there. Yeah. Are you sure you want to do that? And they may go, actually, thanks. Yeah, we're going to skip it. And for the agent, that saves time. You've just saved yourself hours of negotiating, hours of work, writing up the offer, calling the other agent, getting your client really built up for them to come back during an inspection maybe and go, what's that smell? But perhaps the biggest reason behind the brutal honesty trend is the rebellion against real estate euphemisms. It's a reaction to what our industry has been doing for decades and decades. You know, putting a little lipstick on a pig and making it look good even though it may not be. Terms like charming, quaint, and cozy. Realtor term for the house is really small. <laughs> like tiny. Tiny. It's a shoebox. <laughs> yep. Low maintenance. Low maintenance means there's no yard. There's nowhere for the kids to play. It's rocks. Because scraped knees are Fun. Bonus, they're actually a lot of work. Typically, gravel yards are not low maintenance at all. You gotta go pick weeds. Investor special means you're not gonna be able to get financing on this place because it's such a piece of junk. No way an appraiser is gonna say this is livable. And lovingly maintained. It really means that the house has been maintained really well. It just hasn't been updated. Which might be great if you're looking for the 1980s frozen in amber. And with the real estate industry engaging in so much doublespeak for so long. This trundle bed seems kind of small. Jimmy, that's quaint. I can't sleep on quaint. You can understand why a little straight talk seems so appealing. Brutally honest real estate is at the top of the list. Well, guys, the countdown is on. Just four short weeks till Halloween. But houses and neighborhoods aren't the only ones getting tricked out for the spooky holiday. Theme parks are doing the same. From Legoland to Disney, we have a ticket for a thrilling Halloween. The theme parks are known for thrills, and this Halloween, they're bringing the chills. <laughs> we jumped on our broomsticks for a tour of the spookiest celebrations, starting with Legoland's Brick or Treat. Hi, Brick or Treat! <laughs> Brick or Treat is the largest kids party in the nation. And this year, monsters are coming and invading the park. We're introducing a monster party. It will include live entertainment, a costume contest, and the opportunity to meet some new and spooky Legoland characters. Actually, I'm going to introduce you for the first time ever exclusively on the list to our zombie cheerleader, 
She says hello. She's also in the new 40 movie, The Great Monster Chase. All three U.S. Legoland parks are in on the Halloween fun. Legoland California, New York, and Florida. Pricing and dates vary by location. Check Legoland.com for more information. We are turning up the chills and thrills at our next stop, Bush Gardens Hollow Scream in Williamsburg, Virginia. There's five terrifying haunted houses, live entertainment, and party zones for grown-ups. And you can enjoy the scary twists and turns and loops on the park's newest roller coaster, Pantheon. If your little pack of goblins want to get in on the fun, they can visit the Count's Spooktacular with live show and trick-or-treat stations around the park. Visit the Bush Gardens Williamsburg website for dates and ticket prices. Our last stop is the Disney World Resort in Orlando, Florida for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Let's boo this. There's the classic Boo to You Halloween Parade down Main Street. As in years past, there will be plenty of Halloween-themed food. And of course, the fireworks. Anything can happen on Halloween, and it will, at Magic Kingdom. Happy Halloween! The fun runs through Halloween. Check the Disney World website for ticket prices. It's an exciting start to the spooky season <laughs> with theme park celebrations. Okay, break out your dancing shoes. We're gonna try out bachata, a style of Latin dance that just keeps getting more popular. Eddie D. Jamal hit the dance floor and got a lesson we can all learn from. Time to get your body moving because today it's all about the flow and flavor of bachata. Eat, we go one, two, three, eight, oh, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. It's a Latin social dance born in the Caribbean in the 50s and 60s and is hugely popular today. What do you feel when you do bachata? When I feel bachata, I feel grounded. I feel like I'm down to earth. We're breaking down the basics with the help of Ed Amaya, aka Eddie Peligro, director of the K Candela Dance Company. First, let's lay out our foundation and learn the essential body movements. When we're talking about bachata, it's nothing but a sequence of steps and taps. So if we know how to walk, we can know how to dance. We begin by moving our core. In bachata, when you look at it like they're moving so beautifully, yeah. right, how do I get that, that organic feel to it? Boom, we control the basic here in the core. Move your core side to side. From there, you have the bend and straighten at the knees. Boom, we're here, we're here. And a toe ball heel move. Toe ball heel, toe ball heel. So those are the three things. As I go into my movement, I'm bending my knees, I'm moving my core, and I'm feeling the floor. And now this is bachata. Now we have bachata. Stop okay, it. Am I yeah, doing we, it? Hey. Once the foundation is laid, you're ready to take your first steps. So it's three simple steps and a tap. Right, left, right, tap. I'm going one, two, three, tap, four, five, six, seven, tap, eight. And one, two, and three. Eight. And, oh, you got excited? I did. I did. I did. I did. I did. These steps will let you travel across the dance floor forwards and back. Take it back. E one, two, three. Left to right, and when you're ready, add some turns. Turn five. Hey, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I feel like I learned a lot already. Boom. And it's only been like two minutes. We're here. It's Bachata Boot Camp <laughs> with Eddie Pelito. Once you're confident in your basics, grab a partner, because it's time to add some flow and make it your own. This is what we call a work zone, because this is where we're, we're working. This is where we go to work. With your partner, you can switch between open and closed positions. Close position, six, seven, one, two, three. Open position, one, two, three. And it's all about connection. Boom, we're connected. Boom, ask for the Wi-Fi password. We're here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we're here. And again, add your turns when you're ready. Five, six, seven, hey. one, two, three. Bachata is a dance that's all about self-expression. So let go and most importantly, have fun. Five, six, seven, eight. Yo, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we're stepping to the beat and acing the basics of bachata. Still to come on the list, how to keep pets comfortable on road trips. They need to be protected from all potential illnesses that could be out there. Plus, keep your lunch hot while you're at work. 
The innovative heating tent inserted in the lunchbox will heat your meal as much as you prefer. And marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. Revisit the iconic lines of the Princess Bride. I think I said inconceivable, you know, at least once a day for the next two years. Next on the list. YouTube, welcome to the soft, buttery middle of the show. This is a perfect place to pause, subscribe, the button's right there below, and turn on notifications, the one with the little bell. So cute, right? We'd appreciate it, and here's the upside. You'll never miss one minute of the list. All right, back to the show. Welcome back. All right, friends, having a dog is awesome, except when you're about to go on vacation and you got to hit up someone to take care of your dog. Fun fact, I used to call on Jimmy all the time when I went out of town. And I loved it. But now, more than ever, people are bringing their best buddies along with them. Yes, well, there is more to traveling with your pup than just a crate and some kibble. No, so whether you're hitting the road or flying, we have your pet travel tips. Vacations aren't just for the humans. They can include the furry members of your family as well. There's definitely been an increase of pet-friendly housing from hotels to vacation rentals, so more pet owners are wanting to bring their pets along on their vacations. Kimberly Vermillion, Director of Communications for the Arizona Animal Welfare League, has some ways to prep your pup for a trip. Let's start with health and safety. When you're traveling with a pet, is it a good idea to get a wellness check before you go? One thing you really want to be mindful of before you travel with your pet is that they're fully vaccinated because they need to be protected from all potential illnesses that could be out there. Take them for a checkup and get copies of their vaccinations to bring along. If you're traveling in the car or on the plane and your dog can get a little nauseous or anxious, that your vet can provide some medication to help along with that as well. Is it a good idea to map out your trip and know if you need to make a stop where you can Go. Make sure that you're doing your research and making sure that you know that there is an emergency vet just in case. It's also a good idea to pack a pet first aid kit. So if you're going on the road or if you're flying, you want to make sure that you have those essentials for your pup. Next, road trip musts. While I'm driving, if it's a long road trip, what should I plan on doing along the way to make the trip comfortable? You want to make sure that you're providing those stops along the way and make sure that they can you know, stretch their legs and take a potty break. Is it a good idea to feed a dog while you're driving? We suggest feeding them a few hours before you leave on your road trip. To let them settle that in their stomach before, just so they don't get an upset stomach on the ride. The same goes with water. Limit it to your pit stops along the road. What's the safest way to drive? The safest way is in a secure crate and okay. has that secure so it's not moving around. If you can't take them in a crate, use a leash and secure it to the seat belt. Make sure that, you know, if anything were to happen, that she's secure in there and safe. Finally, air travel essentials. All airlines have different restrictions. So you, whatever airline you're looking to fly, make sure you check those restrictions, those guidelines before you book the flight. There could be different fees and a limit on how many dogs you can bring. Your dog may also need a health certificate. And there are a few things you want to be mindful of, that they will have to go through TSA with you, and they'll have to get out of their kennel. So you want to make sure that they're comfortable getting in and out. Getting Rover ready for the vacation of a lifetime. Now, I don't know about you, but I love bringing my own midday meal to the office. And if you do too, well, we found three new products out there that'll definitely make you stand out from the crowd in your break room or make people envious while you're eating at your desk. Coming in at number one, Deli One Flex and Fresh. Deli One is a reusable elastic food cover. That's right, reusable. How do you like them apples, Mother Nature? Yeah, this turned up Tupperware stretches to allow you to store up to 50% more inside. Deli One is also 100% leak proof. Dare me to shake this upside down? Look at that. And the material it uses is said to stretch up to 10,000 times without cracking or breaking. Deli One helps you lock that flavor and freshness in. So not only are you making Mother Nature happy, you're also cutting down on food waste. You can grab four of them on Indiegogo.com for around 30 bucks. At number two, Sunnyside, a solar powered lunchbox that heats and cools itself. The innovative heating tent inserted in the lunchbox will heat your meal as much as you prefer. It's designed to heat up to 167 degrees and can chill food down to around 42 degrees. Turn on the cooling system of Sunnyside via your phone app and relax. It's also leak proof, dishwasher safe, and oh my gosh, get this. It can double as a power bank to charge up your devices. Without any worries, put it inside your bag 
and just take it anywhere you want. You can pre-order this one on Indiegogo.com for about a hundred bucks. Plans are to start shipping next month. And third on our list of cool new containers, Revessel Explorer Kit, a bento style lunchbox with a bamboo lid. The bamboo lid triples as a lid, a cutting board, and a tray. It comes with metal containers that are oven safe and easy to clean. They all have individual lids. They work as bakeware, fridge storage. It's also leak proof and looks pretty stylish. We wanted to create as simple of a product, but give it as many features as we could fit in there. And the company that makes it says it's meant to last. Stainless steel was selected because it's a durable material. The last thing that we want is another product that is used for such a short period of time and then thrown away. Now this one is going for around 95 bucks at Revessel.com. And those were three new containers that look great for packing a lunch. Lots more to come on the list. Stay with us. It's your life. It's your list. We're celebrating National Hispanic Heritage Month. Go to thelisttv.com to learn more. We're back, and on today's watch list, it's inconceivable. The Princess Bride is 35 years old this year. Jackie Denker's looking at some of the unforgettable moments in this comedy classic. The Princess Bride. Let's take you back to the magical land of Florin for not your basic, average, everyday, ordinary, run-of-the-mill, ho-hum fairy tale. My Wesley will always come for me. Your Wesley is dead. I've seen worse. The Princess Bride is a cult classic, so prestigious it's even preserved in the U.S. National Film Registry for being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. The fact that, you know, 35 years later, we're having a conversation about it, tells you that it's achieved some sort of cultural relevance that's just, you know, sustained itself through the years. Mike Michon, head of the moving image section at the Library of Congress, helps us celebrate it with some of the best of what it had to offer. That's wonderful. We begin with its exceptional mix of genres. It's got any sports in it. <laughs> Are you kidding? Fencing, fighting, <laughs> torture. Revenge. It takes those genres at face value. There's just really nothing broad or slapsticky about it. It's a very genial film. It's one of director Rob Reiner's best works that's also considered one of the best love stories told in film. As you wish. Which was brought forth by Carrie Elwes and Robin Wright. Their chemistry is palpable. And real. In his book titled As You Wish, Elwes admitted he was smitten from the first time he saw Robin. Can you move at all? Move? You're alive. If you want, I can fly. They're the backbone of the story. They cause the action, but in some ways, you know, they're almost ancillary. Because it's also the film's outstanding cast that shines, including Wallace Shawn, Mandy Patinkin, and Andre the Giant. And then when you throw in cameos from people like Billy Crystal and Carol Kane and Peter Cook as the impressive clergyman. Marriage is what brings us together today. Really just sort of takes it over the top. Ultimately, every element comes together to make this film memorable, but especially quotable. Now, I think the quote that most people know is Mandy Patinkin. My name is Diego Montoya. You kill my father. Prepare to die. Of course, you know, Wallace Shawn. Inconceivable! You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I went to go see this film when it came out, and I think I said, inconceivable, you know, at least once a day for the next two years. <laughs> We're celebrating the cinematic gem that is The Princess Bride. The end. On the watch list. Welcome back, and it's time for what's last on our list. And KG, there's a new kind of fatigue. Oh, so many fatigues, pandemic fatigue, inflation fatigue, election fatigue. I personally suffer from fatigue fatigue. <laughs> no, I'm talking about tip fatigue. Huh, okay, so people are tired of tipping. Please explain. Okay, well, back in the day, the rule generally was you tip a server 15% for right. solid table mm -hmm. service, maybe 20% for exemplary service, and you know, a few bucks to delivery drivers, baggage handlers. 
those were the rules. Sure, and that's been the standard. But in fact, the study found that pre-pandemic, the average tip was around 15%. Now, the average is around 18.9%. Now, they call that tip creep. Tip amounts creeping up higher and higher. But that is only half of the issue. It's also all the new places we're having to tip. And that's where tip fatigue comes in. People yeah. are seeing tips in places they've never seen them before, like counter service. I mean, if I walk in and buy a cup of coffee to go, do I really have to choose among 20, 22, and 25% tip while you're staring at me? I know the pressure. Okay, here's another example. In the same article, a woman ordered baby formula. I've done that before. And on the payment page, there was a line for a tip online. Okay, KG, I know you were a server for yes. years at Red Robin. That's right. plug. Blah, blah. So on behalf of you and all servers who rely on tips, I'm still going to tip whenever I can. Well, thank you. And for that reason, Jimmy, you did such a great job today. Okay. Wow. A whole dollar. That's Thanks. right. That's me being generous. <laughs> and that's what's last on our list. YouTube, great job watching all the way to the end. I'd give you a tip for your trouble, but we just discussed tip fatigue, so let's skip it. But you know what would be better than 20%? If you'd please like this video, leave us a comment, hey, even subscribe. Seriously, that would feel like a nice pat on the back for sure. Now, how about some more episodes of The List? Here you go, fresh out of the oven. Enjoy.